Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Fiona and I'm in the process of renovating a three bed Victorian property in London. So if you are into renovation and interiors content, then this is the channel for you. So in this video, I'm going to give you insight into all of the decor and aesthetic choices that I am making in my living room. So if you have been watching my content, you will know that I am in the process of renovating my living room and it has absolutely been a journey and I'm so excited to share with you all of the more kind of exciting and beautiful pieces that I'm going to use to make that space feel Mwah. So let's get into it. I think it almost goes without saying that choosing your paint colour probably is the most important aesthetic decision you can make in any house or any room. And if you have been watching my videos, you will know that I've already said that I'm going to paint all the rooms in my house white, basically because I really want to create a clean, serene, open feel to the property. Um, I'm also having panelling if you've seen my previous videos and therefore it's not going to mean that I'm going to have really boring sterile rooms. I think the panelling will really provide much needed texture, visual interest and a drama to all of the white walls and I'm super excited to see the finished product. So when it comes to paint brand I basically considered going between Farrah and Ball and Gelux and actually my painter suggested that if I am not going to have paint colour, actual colour on my walls and paying Farrah and Ball prices just isn't really worth it and he, you know, he's got 30 years experience in the industry and he really stands by Gelux and I decided to go for Gelux Vinyl Silk Emulsion and Vinyl Silk, silk just basically means that the paint has a little sheen to it, not a lot and I prefer to have a little bit of sheen. For some reason, it just looks a little bit nicer than having flat, matte, white walls. I am having matte on my ceiling, but for my walls, I really wanted to have a little bit of sheen. And I think also paints that have a little bit of sheen also are a little bit easier to wipe clean. So that is the first and most important aesthetic choice that I have made in my living. So when it comes to flooring for me, it was always going to be oak herringbone flooring. And actually I am not going for carpet anywhere in the home at all, including the bedrooms which is really controversial in the UK where people typically tend to have hardwood flooring in the living spaces and then in the living rooms it tends to be carpet. But I have decided that I, I don't think I'm a carpet person and I'm also inspired by Parisian apartments and herringbone was always going to be my go-to in terms of the type of flooring that I am going for. So I'm actually going to do a separate video on flooring because it's actually a really big area in terms of how to get it right or what it takes to actually get it right in terms of varnishes, in terms of where to buy it from. So I'll definitely do a separate video on kind of my personal journey when it came to um, choosing and completing my flooring. So herringbone oak flooring, which you can see here, is basically going to be the second biggest aesthetic choice in my living room and actually in the house as well. So the next aesthetic choice is basically my ceiling rose or should I say ceiling roses because I'm actually having more than one in the living room and I came across this beautiful ornate design that you can see here. I think this one measures about 800 millimeters in I want to say diameter um, so it's reasonably large and again I'm having two of these in the living room and I am obsessed with ornate detailing. If you haven't noticed, I love ornate detailing. This bracelet here is a great example of my obsession with kind of ornate, intricate detailing and design. So I'm gonna have two of these ceiling roses in the living room and I think they will just add such, you know, decadence to the ceilings and I cannot wait to see what the final installation of the ceiling roses actually looks like. So when it came to lighting, guys, it took me absolutely ages to find the right light for the living room and actually the rest of the property. So if you've watched my dining room renovation and my kitchen renovation, you would have seen the lights that I actually picked in those two rooms. The lights that I'm going for in the living room are different, but are connected in terms of the uh, theme of industrial that basically ties them together. So before I picked my actual lighting, I went through so many options, 
predominantly from West Elms and whittled it down to this globe light that you can see here. So I want to say, I'm calling it globe, but actually it's not really globe at all. It's almost like a, um, I don't know, a canopy glass um, light. I, I have no idea what the appropriate name is for this, but after going through several options, I ended up choosing this particular one that you can see here. And then for whatever reason, I ordered it and there were complications with the order because it was being ordered from the US. And in the end, I just got really frustrated and decided to continue looking and came across this light that you see here from Industrialville. I probably got the name of the company wrong, but they are the same company that I got my kitchen and dining room lights from. And I absolutely love the sleek and simple design of this. It comes with this beautiful brass detailing and a big bulbous light that you can see here. It's just gonna look like jewelry for the ceiling. So imagine this beautiful, simple light here hanging from the ornate ceiling rows that I showed you earlier. I absolutely can't wait to show you. So this is basically the light that I'm going for, this simple, beautiful, sleek design that you can see here. I should also say that this one that I've chosen versus the West Elm one were significantly different in price. The West Elm one was I think £250 to £300 and the one that I've chosen is only £35. I mean what an absolute saving. The lights that I chose for my living room also come in, I believe it's called Pewter. So this colour that you can see here and they also come in rose gold in case your preference is, is rose gold or, or pewter. So when it comes to the doors that are going into my living room, I am going for these double French doors, which you can see here. And they are basically the same doors that I have going into my kitchen and out into my garden. They are going to be painted black because I have a lot of white walls and I wanted to paint the walls or the doors, sorry, black to add a little bit of drama to all of the rooms. And I also wanted to have double doors because I wanted to let in as much natural light into the hallway as possible. So when it comes to door handles, door handles are surprisingly a really important aesthetic decision. You wouldn't really think so, but they absolutely were in my case. And my original plan was to go for Buster and Punch um, door handles, which you can see here. But I did really kind of um and ah about the Buster and Punch door handles because whilst I absolutely love the quality of their products, I didn't really love the shape of these door handles that come in brass and black, and I believe they come in silver as well. I just prefer sleeker shapes, I've realized, and therefore actually decided not to go for the Buster and Punch door handles instead. I opted for Dowsing and Reynolds door handles, which you can see here. I just, again, simply prefer a sleeker, less kind of round shape. And you might be surprised to know that I am not going for brass door handles. And the main reason is that I do have quite a lot of brass accents already. And I think going for brass doors would have been a little bit overkill. So I'm actually going for um, the black door handles from Dowsing and Reynolds, which you can see here but I am going for brass escachions. So that's a word that I learned <laughs> through my renovation process. Escachion is not a word I literally ever heard of until I started renovating, but basically it's a thing that you put um, the key, no, it's not, you don't put your key into it, but it covers the keyhole basically. So I'm going for black door handles and brass escachions. The difference though is that for my wet room, I decided to go for the brass version of the Dowsing and Reynolds um, handles. Don't ask me why, it just felt like the right thing to do. Like I really did find it strange that I just wanted to go for brass in the wet room, but instinctively it just felt like the right thing to do and therefore I went with instinct. So I'm having brass door handles for the wet room and then all other doors are going to have these um, black handles with brass escachions. It's also worth mentioning that the price difference is, I think, quite significant. So the Buster and Punch door handles are quite expensive. They are £130 per door handle and the Dowsing and Reynolds ones are, I believe, about £75. 
I really love the Dazzling Reynolds as a company. I've never used them before since um, this property and they are really, really good in terms of customer service and also price point as well. So when it comes to radiators, this for me was a decision that took absolutely ages to make because as mentioned in previous videos, renovating is really expensive business and actually the original radiators that I had planned to go for were what I would consider to be kind of mock cast iron radiators and they were probably a fraction of the price of the radiators that I actually ended up going for. So I also talked about in a previous video that it's really good to have a contingency budget because there are going to be instances where you end up actually making much more expensive choices. And I think my radiators were one of those moments where I just decided that it wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense not to go for what I felt was going to be the right decision aesthetically and also just in terms of quality as well. So I ended up basically forking out for um, real cast iron radiators and the company that I found guys, I am obsessed with them. Their on-site experience is incredible, super premium, super luxe. I think they have a company in New York as well and of course they have one in the UK but it's probably one of the most amazing website experiences that I've had during this renovation. So I'm actually going to do a separate video on the process um, that I went through to basically order my radiators because they are bespoke um, in terms of measurements. Um, but this company basically is just mwah, phenomenal. So I definitely want to do a video on my experience with them and just give you more insight into you know, the cost of the radiators, all the different you know, accessories that I bought for my radiators. And these are basically the radiators that I'm going for. They're not exactly the same because I couldn't actually find a picture of the ones that I bought, but the style is, is, is pretty much um, the same. And um, the only difference is that I'm going for black radiators and not this kind of, I suppose, I'm not sure what color this is, but it's not black, but I'm going for black ones. But as mentioned, I will do a separate video on my um, personal radiator, I was going to say radiator journey, but process of ordering radiators. And I really want to show you how incredible this company is because I really value just great on-site experience, great customer experience. And I'll definitely want to share that with you if you are thinking about ordering cast iron radiators as well. So yeah, I'll share that with you in another video. So that is it guys. I gave you insight into all of the aesthetic decisions that I am making in my living room. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I will see you in next week's video. Take care, bye.